Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk on approach to dizzy patients. Dizziness is one of the most frequent complaint in medical outpatients. There are variety of reasons ranging from trivial reasons to life threatening reasons. The patient gives variety of descriptions like lightheadedness, spinning, blackout, imbalance, motion sensitivity, anxiety. Thus, the dizziness is expressed in various ways. This creates confusion and dizziness during diagnosis. Let's see how history taking solves this mystery and how to approach a dizzy patient. Uh, there are various steps which should be followed in the history and examination. The first step is we have to decide the, what is the type of dizziness. There are five main types of dizziness. The second step is if it is vertigo, if it is vertiginous type of dizziness, decide whether it is central or peripheral vertigo. Then comes the presentation, that syndromic presentation, like whether it is recurrent positional vertigo or it is acute severe uh, vertigo or acute vestibular syndrome or it is a chronic vertigo which could be either episodic or persistent. Then comes the duration of attacks. What is the duration of each attack? Then the accompanying symptoms are very important to arrive at a particular diagnosis. Then comes the examination part and the last one is localization whether it is a central vestibular lesion or it is a peripheral vestibular lesion. So let us go stepwise. So coming to the first step that is defining the type of dizziness. The most important investigation in a patient who comes with a history of dizziness is history. So let us see how to approach a patient with dizziness. So dizziness or giddiness, <coughs> there are five different types. Coming to the first type, that is type 1. Uh, in this type of dizziness, the patient feels spinning sensation or reeling sensation the illusion of motion of self or environment. If the patient feels the illusion of motion of self, it is called as subjective vertigo. If it is illusion of motion of environment, it is called as objective vertigo. The subjective vertigo could be central or peripheral. The objective vertigo is usually peripheral. Coming to the localization, if a patient comes with this type of dizziness, that is spinning type of dizziness or vertigo, there is a dysfunction either in the peripheral or the central vestibular system. Coming to the next type that is presyncopal type of dizziness or type 2 dizziness. In this type of dizziness, the patient feels blackout, faint, lightheadedness. Presyncopal dizziness can lead to actual loss of consciousness called as syncope. There are associated systemic symptoms like diaphoresis that is sweating, cold clammy extremities. Usually there is inciting event like prolonged standing, micturition. There could be inciting agent in the form of sudden fear, severe pain, sight of blood. The most common cause of presyncopal type of dizziness is neurocardiogenic syncope. Of course there are serious causes as well which can lead to presyncopal type of dizziness like cardiac arrhythmias, structural cardiac abnormalities, orthostatic hypotension and there are many other causes as well. Coming to the third type of dizziness that is disequilibrium dizziness. In this type of dizziness patient complains of impaired balance and unsteady gait. Patient might say it as dizziness but after digging the history further it's actually impaired balance on standing and walking. So dissecting the history of dizziness is very important. Coming to the localization part, it could be due to unilateral or bilateral vestibular uh, dysfunction or it could be due to deafferentiation that is due to proprioceptive loss which can occur in case of large fiber peripheral neuropathy or it can occur in case of compressive or non-compressive cervical myelopathy. This type of dizziness can also occur in patients with brainstem or cerebellar lesions. Patients with extrapyramidal disorders can ha also have balance problems. Some drugs can also cause uh, imbalance of gait, for example, anti-epileptic drugs. 
now coming to the fourth type of dizziness that is type 4 dizziness is ill defined dizziness in which the patient gives vague description and non specific complaints the most common cause of this type of dizziness is functional dizziness or psychogenic dizziness and there are some psychiatric illnesses also which can lead to dizziness the other causes of this type of dizziness is medications metabolic abnormalities panic attacks and hyperventilation syndrome small vessel disease can also lead to this ill defined dizziness coming to the last variety which helps to understand balance is multiple sensory deficit dizziness this type of dizziness is specifically seen in elderly patients who have vague complaints and difficulty walking and there are multiple concurrent problems we know that balance is controlled by three main sensory inputs that is vision proprioception and vestibular input so in in patient with multiple sensory deficit dizziness patient might have poor vision due to cataract macular degeneration patient might have concurrent proprioceptive loss due to peripheral neuropathy or cervical myelopathy and the patient might have previous insult leading to vestibular uh, deficit so all these sensory inputs are impaired and that leads to non specific type of dizziness in elderly called as multiple sensory deficit dizziness so this was the first step in the approach that is to decide the type of dizziness in my next video i will talk on if the type of dizziness is vertiginous from the history how to decide whether it is central or peripheral thank you for watching this video